we identify rain with the rainforest. What I want to do is turn the telescope around, and I will want to look at things as they're happening on the ground. I want to talk about climate change in terms of climate justice, because hear me well, the message I'm here to deliver today is that the people who are least responsible for climate change are the people who are suffering the most in terms of climate change. And I want to focus on the indigenous peoples of Amazonia, with whom I've been working for much of the past 25 years. Now, rain is the beginning of the rainforest. And even uh, without the rain, it's the most aquatic ecosystem on the planet. <coughs> Few people realize that 40% of the rain in the upper Amazon is generated by the glaciers in the Andes. And as those glaciers, as we've seen in Al Gore's brilliant film, and has been mentioned in so many of the talks, those glaciers are shrinking. This is impacting rainfall problems, impacting rainfall patterns throughout the Amazon. This is the rainforest as we like to think of it. However, scenes like this, as we all well know, are rapidly changing to scenes like this. The incredible rates of population growth, the incredibly poor amount of planning, corporate greed, uh, stupidity, short-sightedness is destroying the greatest expression of life on Earth. And just to put it in concrete terms, according to recent NASA studies, referring back to the minister's speech before this panel, Colombia used to be number two in the world in terms of freshwater reserves, and due to deforestation and the ecocide you heard referred to early, it's now dropped to uh, number 24, from two to 24. While these forests are destroyed, untold numbers of medicines curing so-called incurable diseases are literally going up in smoke. So what's to be done? I've been working on rainforest conservation for 25 years, and I'm here to tell you that these indigenous peoples who are long regarded as bystanders or people in the way or people who cut down rainforests are our greatest hope for protecting rainforest resources. And let me put that in concrete economic terms. Remember that the number one protein source in Latin America, or number one or number two, is fish. So these people are dependent on these forests, these people are dependent on these rivers, these people are dependent on the rains, not only for fresh water, not only for food, but for transport and for too many other things to list in a short presentation such as this. However, patterns are changing. And I don't like to talk about global warming, I like to talk about climate change. Because in the Northeast Amazon, as you see here, two years ago, they had the most catastrophic rains on record. This is my office in the Northeast Amazon. This is an indigenous village of Maroons in Suriname in northeastern South America. This is what happened when the floods receded. These people are paying a much greater price in terms of climate change than we are at this point in time. But the current predicts the future. This is the great trio shaman Amashina, with whom I had the honor of working for 25 years. The rains pick up, the leaf cutter ants are driven to the high ground, the high ground is where the Indians plant their crop, and what do you have? Famine. Because the ants destroy the crops that feed the Indians, who are the best caretakers of Mother Nature. So, why indigenous peoples? It may seem counterintuitive to focus on indigenous peoples to protect the rainforests that remain, but look at this. 25% of the Amazon is indigenous lands. The future of the rainforest in South America, you can see by looking at the status of the rainforest in Central America. With very few exceptions, like under the leadership of uh, the president of Costa Rica, most of the rainforests of Latin America are and will be found in private reserves and indigenous reserves. 5% of the Amazon is in national parks. They're typically very poorly protected. 25% is in the hands of the Indians. So let me give you a concrete example. If you are a logger, or a garimpero, a gold miner, or you want to plant coca, where are you going to do it? In the Tumucumaki National Park in northeastern Brazil, which has three park guards which live 100 miles from the park, or in the Tumukumaki Indigenous Reserve, which is full of 4,000 pissed off Indians with poison tipped arrows. Okay, it's a tragedy of the commons. That's why national parks, unless radical changes are made, do not have a bright future in Latin America. So, just to sum up in conclusion, why work with indigenous peoples to protect the rainforest, to keep global warming from getting worse? Because remember what Hippocrates said, do no harm. Indigenous peoples control 25% of the rainforest, they protect the vital headwaters. They have the most extensive ecological knowledge, and it's the most effective way of protecting standing forest. 
So this is the most important image I'm going to show you. This is the Shingu Reserve. I took this from a single-engine Cessna flying over the eastern border of the Shingu Reserve. This is the Shingu Indigenous Reserve. This is the soy farms outside. This is the border, okay? We have Indians, you have rainforest. We have rainforest, you have Indians. We have white guys, you don't have a single tree. So, I told you we talk about climate change instead of global warming. The Northeast Amazon had the heaviest rains in recorded history two years ago, and Southwestern Amazon had the driest epoch ever recorded. In Acre, there was no forest that wasn't being burned. The air was full of smoke. The hospitals were full of children with asthma. And look, this is the mighty Amazon. This is what they did. Have you ever seen a more revolting image from the rainforest? So this is the future that we don't want to inherit. This is the future that we don't want to create. Very few days ago, General Anthony Zinni, one of the highest uh, rated generals in the American military said, if we don't do something about climate change, wars will be fought over this issue. And the same shaman told me a week ago, something needs to be done about the changing climate. When you have an American soldier and an Amazonian medicine man talking the same language about climate change, it means that good things may indeed happen. Thank you very much.